welcome everybody out to Biz Ninja Radio. We have an awesome guest today who, is, uh, who has a great entrepreneurial story for us. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, with Anthony Kolova about um, what he is working on uh, and what got him here. So, Anthony, welcome out to the Biz Ninja Radio. Well, uh, thank you so much for saying that I'm an awesome guest. That's a nice compliment, hearing that I'm awesome. Well, if nothing else, you got the, the most aggressive flavor saver I've ever seen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, it's hiding a, a, a scar, and um, I cut myself shaving this morning right at that level, so it, it's it's good for, for, you know, I used to have a strip all the way down. Yeah, it was like yeah. a strip right there, but it was it was too much. I only, I only shave it twice a year, um, my mom's birthday and Easter. There you uh, go. <laughs> she, doesn't like, she doesn't like it, so I get rid of it, but it, um, it takes away from the little scar that I have right there, so I dig it. Yeah, so, so. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit about the, the businesses that you're running and building and the things you're working on. Uh, but tell me, were you born an entrepreneur? Or is this something that found you? Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's in my genetic makeup. I think it's part of my DNA, my, my family. I come from a long line of business owners, of free thinkers, of, um, of, of entrepreneurs, uh, people who get stuff done. And um, I, for the, I, I was a late bloomer. I, I didn't, um, and I, I mean that in terms of emotional, like just being able to talk to girls, being able to think for myself, find finding myself, um, and and getting into to, to things that I like, which which include um, entrepreneurship. I'm also a recovering drug addict. I've got 18 years uh, sobriety behind my belt now, and so the time that I spent um, destroying myself and 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 doing drugs, I um I I. I never really fully explored who I was. And so I was a late bloomer for a few reasons and didn't really, I re, I'm 41 now, but I really feel like the point I'm at in my life, I should have been at when I was probably in my late twenties, early thirties. Um, so yeah, my dad's a business owner, my uncle, uh, cousins. Um, it's, I, I just think, it's, yeah, it's, so it's, it's in your makeup, but it was latent because you were dealing, you weren't living really your, the life you should have been living. Yeah. What was the turning point for you that got you, you know, out of that addiction and into building and being, and finally, you know, achieving the, or starting to reach towards that potential? Sure, sure. Um, well, the thing that got me sober was, uh, was a DUI. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, however you want to look at it, I'm a much different person than I was when I was a young man. And, and that's what it took. I was actually kicked out of the Coast Guard for drug related things. I, my, my, my life growing up, it wasn't difficult. I, I, I can't say I was beat as a kid or I had a you know, terrible situation. It was just, I brought it upon myself. Um, and so when I went to treatment, um, I spent seven months, one week and one day in treatment, um, on an all men's facility. And, uh, one day in group therapy, I had realized through the help of a counselor that I had some self-esteem, a light bulb went off when a counselor asked me how my day was. I said it was going very well. I listed some things that were in, that were in my favor. And he said, wow, that sounds like self-esteem something I had never had up until that point. And I was like, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, when was the last time you did drugs? And I'm like, two and a half months or whatever. When was the last time you drank alcohol? When was the last time you meditated or complimented yourself or, or practiced the principles of the 12 steps or whatever? And I was like, well, this morning, uh, you know, and I, I it kind of, at that moment, I had like literal light bulb went off. And from that point on, the desire to drink and drug was, was out of my system. I'm, I'm very fortunate in that case because a lot of my friends have struggled with it. One of the guys that was actually a therapist at my treatment center just relapsed. Um, I actually just got back into therapy. And so it took a good five years for me to be sober before I understood who I was and what I was about and tapped into the creativity that I often find in the business world. So my, my first thing, I was working at a treatment center and my first uh, uh, venture was um, Ginsu knives. You could buy these uh, Ginsu knives for like a dollar and a quarter on eBay. Right. I would sell them. I would sell them for 25 cents and then I'd charge 3.95 shipping. And then I found, a, I found a way to, to take the postage down to like 85 cents. And I was like, brilliant. And that's, so I made a couple of bucks on each one. I think I sold 1600 Ginsu knives, my first go around. Then I sold on eBay, uh, informational CDs. I don't know if you remember those. They had 600 yeah. megabytes of information on how to start businesses. And mine was how to, um, buy wholesale car audio equipment because right. I was in car audio 
from my younger days. So did um, you create that content or were you reselling it kind of like the knives? Well, no, what I actually did is there, there were none of those discs around when I started. What I did is I found about 30 different people or uh, guys on eBay that were selling how to buy all, car audio wholesale, how to build a business, how to sell this, how to do that. And I collected everybody's stuff and I crammed it on a disc and I said the, it was a mega, you know, all in one eBay thing. And, uh, Looking back, I, I was probably messing around with some copyright stuff, right. but I, you know, I was pretty young and it seemed like a good idea. And I, I, I would sell six or seven hundred dollars worth of those every week. And so, for somebody who was living in Prescott, Arizona, making seven and a quarter an hour at a treatment center, to add right. six or seven hundred dollars to my weekly paycheck was was phenomenal. Um, yeah. From there, I went on to uh, I, I bought a hot dog cart. I had a custom hot dog cart made always wanted to do it. So I did it. And as I started to save money, I started to get into other things. My, my real, um, I don't want to say real business. Cause all of those were like, you know, I was getting my, my feet sure, right. Stepping stones. Yeah. But my real, the big one was, um, I started a, with a $700 loan from my father, I, I started a sound deadening company again in the car audio niche, yeah. um, the car audio 12 volt industry. It was called second skin audio. Uh, I sold that company in 2010 over a million and did quite well from a $700 loan. Um, and that's where I really cut my teeth and learned about uh, e-commerce, um, internet marketing, digital, uh, you know, marketing, advertising, um, Facebook ads weren't really a thing when I started that company, um, sold it in 2010. So in the last six years, a lot's happened. Oh, big lot changes. Happened. Yeah. So that was your first kind of big business in terms of, you know, not just you on the internet, but, you know, probably having yeah. some, a team around you. Correct. That, that, yeah, that was a big one. And, um, what I would do is I would purchase, um, I would purchase, uh, V bulletin forums. These are the, you know, mm -hmm. membership forums. And, right. um, I wanted to advertise on one actually. And I sent a message to this guy. I'm like, Hey man, how much is it to advertise on your form? And he says, well, I don't really sell advertising. So I was typing I'm like, you should really think about it. Cause you could probably add 20 or 30 grand to your Wait, delete. Have you ever considered selling your forum? I offered him 10 K. Uh, he was just, just getting married, needed the money. He took it. I went on to buy five more forms in the next couple of years and I would advertise my own products on there and I would sell advertising and I would also sell membership space. And then I, I sold those to vertical scope last year. Um, those were, again, were all in the car audio niche. Um, and that industry had played out for me and I was ready to move on to something else yeah. and uh, I got rid of everything, but I learned a lot about membership sites, um, uh, mass email marketing, email campaigns, things like that. From, from doing all that. And as I, Ooh, you were me. Sorry about that. that was me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. As I, as I got away from buy something for a dollar and sell it for two. Right. Right. I got more into the digital space. Now I do own a company right now um, called my oatmeal.com where right. we custom blends of oatmeal. You go to the website, pick your oats, pick your fruit, your nuts and seeds, sweetener, protein, spices, and then every order is handmade and sent out to you. Um, and that's, you know, actually kind of here right now. So I'll just go yeah. in. Awesome. So that, that's your main, that's kind of the, the, that's one of your main businesses right now. We're going to talk about another one too, but um, yeah, I'd love to see kind of what's happening there. Yeah. It's one of the main businesses, but here's, sure. Here's where we are. So um, this is, these are all the flavors right here. Here's Juan Carlos. What do you got? Pe rice protein, rice protein. Rice protein. You know, um, there's a lot going on. You can see fairly large warehouse. Uh, and uh, I'll make it back to my office right now. But uh, yeah, myoutable.com is, is one of the main businesses. However, we are, um, we listed it for sale a few months ago. Um, the reason why is that I simply don't have the time or energy to provide the leadership that this company needs to be as successful as it deserves. And so recognizing that I decided to list it for sale uh -huh. and, and try to turn it over. There we go. To somebody that has a passion for brick and mortar business and the food industry, I could turn it into something that um, for lack, again, lack of leadership that I'm not able to with the energy that I'm giving it. I pretty much neglect it and it, it you know, the employees run it. And uh, I focus on the digital marketing side, right. my other company, Kalova Media. So gotcha. 
Um, I'm very interested in the digital side simply because um, uh, higher higher margins. You know, uh, it, it's fun to A/B test stuff and to try to figure out what works and and what doesn't for every different industry. And, and when right. I see something work and in the digital space, if you have the traffic, when it works, it doesn't just work; it skyrockets. Like, and you can see that on a on a small, on a big level, you know, on a daily basis. In in some cases, um, I'm, yeah, so I'm actually, I'm actually, I was looking at a picture that you shared in uh, in the ClickFunnels group of your stats for um, iifym.com, right? Where it was basically yeah. like just getting going, just taking off. And the last time I looked at stats, I mean, it looks like you were doing, you know, in the, in the five figures daily or uh, weekly. Um, <laughs> yeah, daily would be even better, but, uh, but I mean, still, I mean, like it, it was a really pretty, it was a really short time frame uh, on that stat list. And so I think the digital is obviously that's where so many marketers love to play these days. Yeah. But is that, is that the next big push for you? Um, what I, I F Y M. Uh huh. Um, yeah, we started, we started working on IIF WAM back in February. Um, I, I brought in a CMO and I've got a content manager now and, uh, I've had, I've had IIF WAM.com for six or seven years and I just never really did anything with it. And it, it gets a lot of organic traffic, which is the key traffic, you know, uh, traffic audience message, uh, you know, and then call to action. Those are like the big things right there. But if you don't have the traffic, it's not going to work. Um, not, not at our level. And so I'm very fortunate that this website gets a lot of traffic. Um, yeah, for, for us, for me, um, IFYM is where it's at, but we're also, we're also building out about 30 different domains, 30 different websites that are in the, the macro dieting space, the nutrition and fitness space. We have got broscience.com. I've got watermymacros.com. That alone gets about 4,000 unique visitors every day just sitting there wow. simply because it's a keyword rich domain name. Um, we've got uh, good lead magnets on it, and then we're, we're, we're starting to do some conversions. Uh, fitladies.com, I just acquired that. So we're really what we're doing is we're, it's not just IIFYM. We're, it's, it's Colova Media, and Colova okay. Media – the plan is to centered with IIF WAM because there's right. a lot of there and macrotracker.com, which is a, a calorie macronutrient counting website that you enter your food and it, it basically helps you stay on point and, and lose weight or build muscle, whatever. Um, but the idea is 30 different websites that are all ranking in the number one, two, four, seven spot, at least four positions in Google is what we want. So, our strategy is a little bit different from that of others. I go for organic traffic. I want warm traffic. I don't want to pay for it. I don't want cold traffic. That's how we get 20,000 uniques a day with IIFYM. We're working on getting up to 50,000. Um, but the idea is that we just basically buy uh, keyword rich domains that have, um, you know, is backlinks are good. The, you know, uh, an older domain is obviously going to, you know, be better in the eyes of Google. We want to, we want to have as much domain authority as possible. Right. So, we spend the money on the domain names. Like I bought yogapants.com last year. I acquired that. So when we're ready, that's going to be kind of like my, my three, $400 million cash out type of a deal. Um, but uh, if we, the so way I, let me just kind of back up for the people that maybe aren't as diehard into internet marketing as, as you are. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. So, no. So it's okay. So you pick, you, you pick a, uh, a website domain that is keyword rich, meaning that it has the words that people are searching for actually in the name of the domain. Uh, and then you build it out with content um, and you add, um, you know, so that it, it becomes, it ranks even better based on the content that's there. And then how do you take those, right? And what's your monetization strategy? Like how are you taking those and turning it into, okay, I've got warm traffic. How are you deciding with all of these different things that you have going on, which way you're going to create, you know, take the traffic and turn it into dollars? Well, we, we have, we have um, two meetings a week with me, my CMO, um, the, our SEO guy, who's also a web developer for these other 30 websites that we're slowly, slowly doing. And we just come up with a strategy and it's a little bit different for everyone because uh, the lead magnet, for example, that is on IFYM, works on whataremymacros.com but might not work on fitladies.com because fitladies is more of a fitness compared to a nutrition. So the, first we have to identify who is going to the website. So like 
you know, you had mentioned, you explained a little bit about the, the keyword rich domain. And to further illustrate that, if you go to cars.com, you're not going to find water buffalo. You're going to find cars. And that's because that's how Google makes it work. And they're ranking very high. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that first we're going for domain names that we know that we can hit that audience because we know the audience, what they want. I wouldn't try to go for for somebody outside of my expertise level or outside the expertise level of the people that I hire to fill in the blanks where I lack experience and, and you know, uh, desire, whatever. So I'm not going to go for car audio anymore, even though I know it, I'm not going to go for how to farm or how to, how to make money online, even though I know how to do that. I'm going to go for the diet niche because I know that and I know fitness and I know what these people are thinking. And so that's, that's what I'm going to hit. So first we want to make sure that our, our, our audience, we select a domain name based on the audience. That's key. And then we have to take our audience and we have to segment it and do, okay, we got men, we got women, we have people who want to build muscle. We have people who want to lose weight. We have to make sure that our message is on point for the people that are coming to that domain. Then um, we build the SEO according to that little ball right there so that we make sure that, that those people hit us. So we hit the keywords that those people are searching for. Then once those people come to our site, we have to make sure that our message is on point to what their problem is. Once we know what their problem is, I know what the problem is for somebody who's a, you know, 45 year old woman who's five foot 10 that weighs 180 pounds. I know what her problem is and why she's coming to our website. She's coming to our website to lose weight. She's tried things before. We right. need to make our, number one, our message pinpoints her exactly talks to her problems, empathizes with her, and then obviously provide a solution and have a call to action. But we need to make sure that our message is on point. And if it's on point and, and we remove every stumbling block to her making that decision, if we can buy her, build her trust in the copy, in the message, then there's a higher chance that she's going to convert with trust as a customer and then show us her trust monetarily with the money. Right. Then, then it's up to us to provide the value. If right. value is not there, it does. I mean, refunds are going to come in. Claims are going to come in. People are going to be unhappy. You're going to lose customers. It, it really, it, for me, I mean, it kind of starts with the value. Like um, I can't ethically, morally, I can't, I'm with good conscience, put something out there that sucks. Yeah. And so I, I, we spend a lot of time making sure that's why we, we do a little bit of digital products, but we do more digital services a service that we can custom tailor to their needs so that we can overload them with so much information and so much value that they have no choice but to say, wow, these guys know what they're doing. These guys helped me. They made it super easy. They spoke directly to me. I want more. And then we, we upsell them. We, you know, and we, and we work them up the ladder. Sure. So for, uh, again, for the unindoctrinated, right, a value ladder is uh, the, increasing dollar amount steps that you take from somebody from giving them, uh, you know, you've mentioned Anthony, the term lead magnet, which is usually that free thing. That's something that you give somebody to just start the process, the transaction. Now, oftentimes it's a, a free ebook or access to a calculator, maybe or yeah. access to some content that they want uh, in exchange for an email. And this is the beginning of a ladder, uh, which usually, you know, many times the next step is what they call a tripwire, which is that, that first low price step, and then you lead them all the way up. So what, you know, you're giving it, you've used a, a few different types of lead magnets. What are some examples of those? Uh, the, the calculator, I, I created the first macronutrient based calculator out there. It's been duplicated a hundred times now. Um, okay. Yeah, but it's, uh, people want to know what in our space, um, macronutrients, and for your listeners, what we do is we take, um, we look at how many calories your, burn, your body burns in a day, um, we subtract a percentage from that. You eat that number of calories and basically you lose weight because you're forcing your body to trigger fat loss and use the fat your body stores as fuel to make up the deficit between what you're eating and what you need. That's basically how it works. Now, there's a lot of math involved with that to figure out, okay, out of those calories, how much carbs, protein, fat, you know, do you need? And right. so we have a calculator where you type things in and it spits this, this information out at you. It's very valuable. You don't have to sit there and do, don't have to do any research. We've done it all. We we've made it very simple. And as a result of being the first ones doing this, it, it, a lot of people 
sent us traffic and they continue to send us traffic. And as a result, we have thousands and thousands of backlinks and, and for us that that lead magnet works. Um, we also have a free, um, IIF WAM starter guide, like, like you had touched on before the tripwire, which is the low price, $7, $10 item. We, we give them something for free. Again, the value has to be there. They have to right. see it, read it and, and be blown away by it so that they're encouraged to go to the next step. I think this is, this is like the fundamental shift uh, from like a traditional or a brick and mortar or an old school business and today's business, right? Is that yeah. it's value first and getting and collecting dollars second. And it, it's really flipping everything. Like I had uh, Neil Patel on a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about flipping your funnel, which, you know, to me, you kind of missed the description, but I understood what he meant. It meant give value, give them something they need. And they may not convert, but they, sh but the ones that get the value from it, that understand they're, they're like self-selecting the next step. And then, yeah. uh, and then you're going to keep giving them value, but obviously also collecting greater pay. And so, I mean, by the time that somebody has gotten to really like one of your core offers, you've given them access to a calculator, simply in exchange for an email, which was a pretty good fair deal. And then uh, you're going to give them another th something else, maybe even for free before you even take that you know, like a $7 offer. And so these guys, I mean, the amount of value that you give compared to, you know, if you walk into a GNC is massively different. Oh, totally but, different. And then, but what kind of core offers are you guys delivering? Cause I know like when we looked at your stats, I don't think that those dollar amounts or, you know, five figures a week were made up of um, $7 items, were they? Um, no, we don't actually have a, any tripwires actually. Okay. Um, we go lead magnet, tons of value. Coral. Yeah. Here, here's what we do. We, we, um, we have, so we have two ways that they can get into our list. They can get in through the calculator, which we know what they're looking for, or they can just sign up to our email list and our newsletter, which in, uh, we kind of know what they're looking for. Um, but eventually what happens is they, they get their macros from the calculator or they get signed up to our newsletter. Then they get an email that gives them two more free gifts. They get a the, the guide, which is an amazing. It, we spent a lot of time and a lot of money on it. It's gorgeous and it's informative too. Um, they get the guide, and then they get a twenty five percent discount at myoatmeal.com. So that's another little freebie. Sure. Like, like here's some healthy foods. You know, you can load your protein up, and we and we tell them about it. And so we're we're just giving them, giving them, giving them. And and I think you were right when you said that uh, Neil. Patel said, you know, flip your funnel and get the value first. I think the ingredient in there, there's, it's two part. It's, it's building a relationship. And, and with that, you have to have trust. And if you don't have that trust, then the relationship is going to go nowhere. And that, you know, you, you know, the phrase, the money is in the list. And for your listeners, the email list, you, you build an email list and then you can market to these people because they're listening to what you say. But if they don't trust what you say, they're not going to listen or they're just going to bounce or they're going to unsubscribe. So for me, it comes all down to trust in order to build a relationship. And again, that comes to value, which speaks to what Neil was saying about giving the value first, because it's when you give somebody, it's just, it's just a sales technique, really an old school sales technique. When you give somebody something for free, they have a hard time, you know, like, I don't know, I've gone into like a car dealership and like, you want a donut or something or then it build rapport that way yeah it's a, the principle of reciprocity right like if you've been given something now there's that, that entire you know feeling like you've got to give back and it creates it creates a value imbalance which a person subconsciously wants to even out that, that's um, it exactly yeah, yeah so, so we, we don't actually have a uh, uh tripwire we go from macros or you know free items straight to hey this is, if you're trying to lose weight, let us, let us help you the best way that we know how. And it's not with the book. It's not with, it's by giving you your own specific custom macros. Um, that's either $99 or $97 or $47. Okay. Um, if we're having a sale, then we jump into higher items. Okay. So, I mean, the value you, you jump in there, you definitely move the price points up. Um, now, so here's the hard thing that I, when I talk to uh, young entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs, business owners in transition, which is the, the guys moving from the old mindset to the new mindset is that they often get scared. Like it's going to take too long to start making money, which is one of those funny things where it's like they're drinking the well water or, you know, they're, they're, they're drinking things too early. Right. So they're trying to live off tomorrow instead of spending a little bit of time being patient. But how do you, like, I'm sure you get asked that same question. Like, oh man, I don't have time to like 
build a list. I don't have time to do this. I got to make money. I got to pay the bills. Like, how do you, what's your advice to those kind of people? I would say I look to Gary V for, for some simple advice. And that's, you can't, I understand the argument, but to say you don't have time, Gary, you know, you watch any of his videos and he's going to tell you, you can hustle from 11 o'clock at night until two in the morning. That's three hours a day. You can still have your family time, still hit the gym, still do your job. It's, I, I, I certainly understand the impatience of wanting it now. But sometimes things don't happen overnight. And unfortunately, a lot of people in the coaching industry, in the, in the shovel salesman realm, tend to um, overpromise and talk about, oh, it's, you know, I made this much money, you know, case study number four. And it's like they, they oversell and they overpromise and, and they make it seem like doing this is really simple. Now, right. I can tell you. I can, I know for a fact when I wake up, I know how much money is going to be there waiting for me. And I have a decent idea of where it's going to end at the end of the day. That's only because I put the time in and the work. And, and it's like this, I'll, I'll like, I'll do use an analogy in the diet industry. People always want to lose weight super fast. It's right. like, um, I know somebody who quit their diet because they weren't losing fast enough, even though they were losing two pounds a week. Right. It's like, you're okay. That might be, you're only making 50 bucks a week, but you're making 50 bucks a week. That's a tank of gas. Right. You don't have to buy gas now. What's next? Next, you don't have to buy groceries. Then you don't have a house payment. Then you don't have a yacht payment. But wait, you got a yacht? Like, you know, like they don't think about these things. So sure. in the diet industry, people always want to jump to the weight loss right off the bat, right uh, immediately. Yeah, and they, it, took them, it took them a decade to put on 80 extra pounds, but right? they, they're going to lose it in three months. Yeah, so I, what I tell people is this. Like, look, it's going to take you six months to lose the weight. Let's just say six months. I don't know. Maybe it's going to take you two years to figure out your digital marketing strategy until the point where you're making the money you want to make. In six months or two years, you, you have literally three options in the diet. You know, you're, you're going to be, well, no, you have four, really. You're, you're going to be heavier. You're going to be lighter. You're going to be the same. Or you're going to be dead. <laughs> I was I was really wondering what the fourth option was. Those are in six months. Those are the only options that you have, and you can be anywhere between these. And this one's pretty pretty solid, right? Yeah. But you, anywhere in there. So six months is going to be here, whether you like it or not. And I do. I mean, if I look back at all the times that I could have done something, you know, we we would all be millionaires. We would all have the woman of our dreams. We'd all be driving Ferraris. We would all be one with the world. You know, like world peace would be solved but sure. people but want you know there's there's two principles kind of at work right here in what we're talking about one is like the the disadvantage of hindsight right like i think sometimes hindsight is a curse because yeah, people end up getting stuck in the past instead of looking to learn from it very few people are like oh man looking back i should have done this and so therefore i'm going to take the following action they usually just get pissed off and complain yeah. about it across, you know over a over a pint of beer and so, or, and then the second principle is that it's, uh, it's through that constant steady action that big things happen. Um, and so even if you look at like your stats for IIFYM, you, you just mentioned you owned that domain for six years. So there was a lot of time and a lot of psychological buildup and probably other things happening before all of a sudden we see your click funnel stats look like a hockey stick because yeah. there was a lot of work happening in advance. And I think that's, that's the part of the entrepreneurial journey that I think gets lost sometimes when we're talking to friends or when we're sharing the story is that, because it's not the sexy part. It's not the part where um, you know, it, it gets people excited and gets a heart racing. It's the part where it's like, yeah, I, I, you know, I punched it out in the trenches for six years, figuring out what the, what the right mix was gonna be. And then we got, and then we found it. And then we started seeing that grow. Sure. Now, I, I will say this. I will say this. You, you are absolutely 100% correct. I happen to be fortunate in the way that I have owned the domain name for about six years, IIFYM.com. I, I jumped on it early, um, and I just I didn't do anything with it because I had other. I still had my sound editing business. I right. still had my car audio forums, right. um, myoatmeal.com. I had a lot going on, so I was doing really well, and I, and I knew it had potential, but I didn't know how much. It honestly wasn't until this year that I made the decision to focus on it and brought in a CMO. And that's exactly when 
um, he was like, what are you doing? Why you get 20,000 unique visitors a day? What, and you make, you're doing $125,000 a year, which don't get me wrong. $125,000 a year, great money. But he's like, you could be doing $3 million a year. What, why, why are you not, why are you not doing so? So there's, there's two huge things there. One is the value of, of synergy and bringing in experts in the areas where you're weak, right? And then two is reevaluating the position of, of one of your projects and seeing if it needs to be improved or leveraged or shift or pivoted, right? So when you brought that guy in and you guys start collaborating, coming up um, with, hey, instead of letting this just kind of plug along and do okay, we're going to turn it into something. You know, what was, uh, what was the first kind of what was your, what were your first steps? You know, if somebody else had a similar position where they have an asset they've been sitting on maybe for a while, that's just underutilized. Um, what's the first step to really like leveraging that and getting the momentum going to the next level? Yeah. Taking a personal inventory. Okay. A personal inventory. Um, because like you said, there are two things. And one of those things is, is for me, it, it's not necessarily taking an inventory of what the company can possibly do or what the website potential is, but it's like, what am I willing to do to get there? And like, if I'm not willing to do it, so like six years, I sat on this thing, just letting it do whatever it did. I put a little bit into it, but really what it took was me saying, okay, am I willing to step back from my oatmeal.com to focus on this? Am I willing to give up the ego part? Because for whatever reason, they refer to me as Mr. My Oatmeal and my wife is Mrs. My Oatmeal. And oh, that's, man. am I willing to not be Mr. My Oatmeal anymore? Set that aside, which I love being that guy. Yeah. And focus my energy on this. And at, at the end of the day, I had to look and say, okay, well, I have passion about both businesses, but the potential for this one is so much greater. To, and, and right now it's doing 30 times the, the, the profit. And it requires 20% to work. So it, it became an easy decision when I looked at that. But taking a personal so inventory. You had to step back. You had to take that inventory. You had to, you had to set the ego aside for a moment and say, what's better for Anthony in the long term? And yeah, what's yeah. better for Anthony's energy in the long term? Yeah. And then and, and, and other personal inventory. Um, what am I capable of doing and what am I not? So many people want to focus on the things that they're good at. And then that's all they do is what they're good at. They don't look at the things that they... Are, are, are not good at the things that they lack the the you know um and i i've only recently realized what it is that i'm absolutely terrible at and and that's marketing it's i mean funny. I'm, I'm bad you know and i've now somebody in a different position would look at me and want to have what i have but i compare myself to like okay neil patel or or, or, or Brunson or Dice or, well, or because you are you're significantly better than the average business owner, but you're not like the neurosurgeon of marketing. Right. Exactly. Uh, I'm yeah. not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not like you know Brunson or Mikel Dia or any of these other guys that are just they push a button and they make millions. You know, like right, they. Right. It. But when I talk about a personal inventory, I have to look at what I'm willing to do, how many hours I'm willing to spend, and again, what I'm good at and what I'm not, and then bite it and just be like, okay, I'm going to pay somebody, even if I'm losing money to do the things for me that, that I know that I'm not, it's like uh, Henry Ford. When did you know the story of Henry Ford? When he brought everybody into all the reporters into his office, they were all saying how dumb he was because he didn't graduate high school. And he said, come on in all you reporters and, and you can ask me any question and I'll answer it. And so a reporter stepped up and he's like, all right, Mr. Ford, what's the square root of whatever, whatever, whatever he got on the phone. He called one of his engineers. Engineer came in, answered the question. He goes, your question's been answered. That's, yeah. that's the, the mentality is like. Yeah, the power, I, the ability to have the people around you that can answer any, any question, right? And building a team. It's, it's really, it's having a team, you know, that, that works and does the right thing. I just had all of my employees send me, give me a list. I said, put together a list of everything that you are good at, everything you are passionate at, and everything not related to your job that you want to do as in this world. And they gave it to me. And now what I'm doing is I'm looking at those things and trying to find a new position for them so that they can excel and be happy at what they do here rather than just do the work that I give them that they're already good at. But if, if, yeah. if Trace says, you know, I'm good at managing people, well, maybe he needs to be a manager and I need to test that. If Devin says, oh, well, I'm good at sales, I need to get, I need to put, you know, her in that place. Sure. And, um, and that team is surrounding yourself with the team, I think is by far the biggest way to, um, to grow personally and, uh, financially and, and all the other. Yeah, yeah. 
you've hit probably a dozen, a dozen topics that we could do a deep dive on. I mean, yeah. uh, the person on the tour. And then even when you were comparing just the raw business of um, IIFYM and all of its ancillary pieces and uh, my oatmeal and you realize, okay, you know, taking away ego, taking away everything else, one has a massive ability to make more money on a, on a higher margin and less potential. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I heard recently a, the concept of like, you have to look at each of these opportunities as a vehicle and every vehicle is, has a, is going to move you along the path, but each one has a different capacity. So like maybe a different size motor or has a different size ability that, you know, how many people it can carry. And then there's also like, you know, how fast it can get you there. And so there are like in all of those, you know, like a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we have, we own dozens or hundreds of websites and domains. And, you know, it's important to take back, take a step back from the pride point of it and say, okay, I've got all of these opportunities. It's not always about, you know, it, passion matters, right? Yeah, when it comes down between A and B and it's about which one has, is the bigger vehicle and has yeah. the bigger chance, right? And, and that's the one, because in the end, bandwidth and, and time and resources are limited. Yeah. Um, and that time, that's the one thing we don't get back, right? I mean, you can, you can blow money and make it back somewhere else and you can, um, and you, there's a lot of other commodities that are replaceable, but time is not. So it's about which vehicles can grow. And it sounds like that's the choice you made when you're saying, okay, maybe my oatmeal, which you love, it sounds like, and, and you, it was part of your personal identity, but it's not the vehicle that's going to take you to your ultimate goals. Well, for me, the ultimate goal is, um, so I could already say that I'm in a position to retire or I have retired, but really at 35, when I sold my other company, what are you going to do when you're 35? You can only travel the world so much. And believe me, it was amazing. And I'm not trying to say like I regret right. it or I wouldn't do it again or right. it's a bad idea. But um, you can only do that stuff so much. So for me, it's creating if – I, if I have the two businesses and the one has passion and I can come to work every day passionate about what I do and motivate my people and see a profit, then that's great. But if the other one has – 30 times the potential, which, and actually that's where we're at right now is just 30 times. It, right. it, it way more than that. The way I see it, um, both of them have, um, have, I have passion for both. Why not focus on the one that has the most potential? Like you were saying, build it, build it, build it, and then sell it, get rid of it, save all the money I can so that I can then do what I really want to do in this world. In this world, do I really want to be a marketer? No, you know what I want to do? I want to I want to cook food for people. I want to help people. I want to I want to give to the homeless. I want to be a philanthropist. I want to dress up for fancy parties and drop a thousand dollars here or there and help people. I want to I want to contribute to my community and I want a vacation and I want to eat good food. I want to have a good body and all of that stuff requires time and effort, you know? And I can't do it if I'm making 10, 20 dollars an hour working for somebody else. And I couldn't do it while I was working myoatmeal.com every day. Now I could build myoatmeal.com every day and maybe 10 or 12 years I could do that. But why when I could build IIFYM.com for two years and then save those 10 years and get right into doing what I want to do, going to Burning Man, chasing, chasing burns, going dancing, giving back to my community, uh, working with art and inspiring others, life coaching, all of these things that I want to do for free. I do life coaching and I do it for free. I always, I also do business consulting and that I do not do for free. Right. But life, I like to help people. Recovering drug addicts, I love to help people. So things like that, you know, like I want to have the lifestyle. Yeah. So I will give up a little bit of the passion in the business world to gain faster access to my life passion for the rest of my life. Sure. Does and I think it's that, it's that trade off that a lot of people realize that they probably don't even realize they're making that that trade-off that they're not that say okay if i just sacrificed a little bit more now it would pay off dividends down the road they don't do that they just keep plugging away on the status quo um and it sounds to me like you know you're in agreement with me which is that it's not money that buys happiness it's no. money that buys freedom and time and the ability to do what you want to do when you want to do it and to me that that level of freedom is is true happiness the ability to do what you want when you want without fear of constraints i think it depends on the person because while it's true that the money will the money will provide the comfort and um means to do many things um the money itself as you as you said does not does not solve problems i i've been a miserable prick while having lots of money 
And it wasn't until I actually, and there's a lot of people that, that we probably both know that right. have a lot of money that are not living a life full of purpose and passion. You know, they, 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 they're, they're still, they're still not awake. They're still closed on in, in, in like in, in, in the spirit world and the emotional world, they have some arrested development going on or whatever. So what I like to think is like, I could getting that money helps me be the person that I'd like to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, so totally. The person I want to be is a philanthropist. Um, guess what? You got to have money. For that. The person I want to be wants to donate lots of money and lots of time and lots of energy. I can't donate my time and my energy if I'm busy working for the man or, you know, busy working a job. So just because the money, the money is a catalyst that gets us there, but it's the person behind the money that, that, that does either something special or something selfish. Right. And I, I would rather be the person that does something selfish. So the freedom that you're talking about, money might not buy freedom for somebody else. It might, it might buy problems. And That's so, true. Sure. You know, and there's always a different way to look at it, but I definitely right. agree with you that when you have money, you, you don't have the problems that most people have. Now the problems you have is, are much, much different. They are different. And I, and I think there are the type, there are the people that um, either by way of where their money comes from, then they're, they're constantly stressed. Like if it's a cash flow situation that they're always, yeah. the spigots about to turn off, um, or if they're so worried about protecting their assets that they can't have freedom or if they really just don't have a purpose. Like you have a, you have a vision of what it is you want to accomplish Absolutely. when you reach that point. And that, that without that, anyone's going to feel lost. Yeah. Um, and you know, when, when you're, you know, you said you're in your early forties and I'm sure that you talk to guys in their, you know, their twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, you know, at, at every point of life that are trying to flip that switch that are trying to make that, get that momentum going in their life. And maybe they didn't have a family of a family of uh, business owners to copy and maybe they don't have a mentor for those people like that say, Hey, what's, what's my first step? What do you tell them? Well, let me start by saying that my battery is about 22%. Good. <laughs> we, All right, we got, it's good. We only got about two more minutes. We started this conversation at 80%. Up. So what I tell people is this, um, it kind of goes back to what you had said. Um, or were you born into entrepreneurship? And I think you either have it or you don't. Now, if you don't, that doesn't mean you can't get it. It's just hard work, perseverance, and, and A-B testing your life. That's what it comes down to, split testing your life and figuring out what works for you. So what I tell people is do something you know, do something you're passionate about, or do something that you're willing to learn about. If it's one of those three things, Right? If it's one of those three things, you're going to be all right. Don't jump into something that you have no idea. Everybody's doing the internet, so I'm going to do the internet because that's where it's at. Um, maybe not for you. Maybe sure. you're really good at fixing cars, and maybe you need to. Do, now, you could do something on the internet, how to fix the car.com, and you can make a book, and you can do some things. But, again, it comes to split testing your life and, right. and doing different, trying different things. And finding your path, right? Not, not just because somebody else did IAFYM doesn't mean I should do – Something no, I, you know, IIFYM dot co or whatever. Right? It's finding your own path and finding your own thing, not just copying someone. It's it's saying. Yeah, I, I, I tried lots of things. Here. Yeah. Well, when when I when I first started, I I did what everybody else was doing, and finally I had to just I just you know people will say, oh, luck is when what is it? Preparation yeah. like opportunity. There you go. Uh, I think there's a little bit of luck in the world. I mean, sometimes stuff just lines up right, and it's like, and I wasn't prepared for it, you know, but I took it. Sure. You know, and, um, so there's a certain amount of that, but the key here's, here's the one thing. Here is the one, the one gem of value that I would provide to everybody. And it's, it's something we all know. Don't quit. If you keep on moving forward and you keep, and you learn lessons from your failures, I don't consider them failures. I bought businesses that failed. I bought one, uh, I bought an ebook thing, $55,000 tanked. Like, I, I mean, I did some stupid things just trying to get into this, you know? Right. Um, but if you move forward and you, and you, and you do so knowing that it's going to be difficult, but you're going to figure it out. If you keep learning your lessons, find the lesson in every single thing that you do. And if you need to jot it down, come up with a system, yep. just don't quit. Don't quit because that's, that's when everything stops. If you keep, even if it's an hour a day, one email a day, one change on your website a day, one little thing. It doesn't really matter. Move forward and, and figure it out because it, and it, it might take you 10 years, but in 10 years, 
you're either going to be fatter, you're going to be skinnier, you're going to be the same, or you're going to be dead. Right. You're going to be bigger, your bank account's going to be smaller, it's going to be the same, or you're going to be dead. So knowing that you can make it bigger. Now, if I were to put you or any random person in a situation and I say, look, here's a picture of your life in 10 years from now, after trying to figure it out 10 years from now, you see that Ferrari, that's yours. You see that big house, that's yours. You see the relationship that you have with your wife because you have so much free time that you're able to pamper her and you're able to do stuff with her and treat her like a queen. That relationship is solid. That house is there. That car is yours. Those kids are happy because of everything you did during those 10 years. It's the same thing I tell my, my, my weight loss clients. If I were to show you a picture of yourself in shape, able to tie your own shoes, scale the wall, jump a puddle, lose 100 pounds, play with your grandkids, if I were to put you in that body for a day, when you went back to your regular body, you would do everything you could to get back to that point, even if it took you two years to do. Same thing goes with the entrepreneur. If I can put you in those shoes, if I can put you in my shoes and you could live my life for one day, I guarantee tomorrow you would do everything you could to get back to my mindset and you, and, and you would do it. The key is not quitting. And then from there, it's learning your lessons and applying them and figuring out what works. Awesome. Anthony, there's a, a ton of gems in this. Um, and I hope that everyone extracts them and, and deep dives a little bit more into each of the subjects that you covered. Um, really quick, if anybody wants to uh, learn more about you or learn more about your businesses, where should they go? Um, I'll just give you my personal email address. Like, no joke. It's out Kalova. On the, out on, this is going on radio. Oh, okay. Kalova at gmail.com. It's C O L L O V A at gmail.com. And I, I don't ever do that. Okay. <laughs> that's, my, that's my personal. I'm going to launch anthonykalova.com sometime. I just haven't prioritized it. But um, otherwise, IIFYM.com for fat loss. Um, you know, and you can hit the contact us button or whatever. And you can get to me there too. But it's Kalova. Mm -hmm at gmail.com. Um, you know, I work with, you know, uh, recovering drug addicts. I work with uh, business owners. We create sales funnels. We, you know, I've got a, a lot of people I can refer other people to. Sure. And, and the basic thing is, is I just like to help people. I feel good when I help people and that's, that's what I want to do. So, um, don't be afraid to hit me up if anybody has questions. Otherwise, you know, um, treat yourself well, treat others well and be well. Awesome. Thank you for coming out on the show and uh, look forward to seeing all of your next your future successes and seeing everything that you're building. Thanks Tyler, for thank you for the trust and thank you for, for asking me to come on your show. It's an honor and it's, it's been my pleasure.